All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at how we can create uh, a fabric weave animation. Now, uh, I'm basing this off a tutorial I saw online that was originally done in X Particles. And while X Particles is great, um, as I was watching and I thought, you know, there's really no reason we need a plugin for this. And while there are times we need plugins for like smoke and fire and, and liquids, um, this is not the case. So I thought it would be fun to do a video to see how we could end up with a similar result um, without using X particles. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here's the video. Um, I saw it is a bit old, five years. Um, great tutorial, by the way. Definitely recommend watching it if you do have X particles and want to see how to do this in there. But with this, I was looking at this and, you know, it's it's really basic. The There's no reason we need X particles to create this look. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And also, this will be relatively procedural. Um, so I'm going to start by going into a side view and coming into my um, spline pen. I do want to make sure snap is turned on uh, and that in my snap settings here, grid and work plane are turned on. So that will allow me to create um, my pen tool shape and just kind of make this as even as possible as quickly as possible. And you can make this as shorter or as long as you would like. It's also possible to kind of duplicate it out and connect them. Um, I'll do this a little bit longer before maybe going through and connecting these just so we can see that process. Um, maybe just a few more as well. All right, so that is looking good. Hit escape to finish it, back to my um, right view. And what I can do is snap my axis to something like right there, and then duplicate this. Okay, actually make sure I turn axis modification off before duplicating it. And this is a bit strange where it won't snap at this point. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but I know that my grid spacings are every 50, so I can just kind of use my transform there to type that in. And so what I'll do is actually delete this previous point. Okay, so that way when I connect and delete these, I can join these together without having that extra point in there. So I'll do join, joins up perfectly. And maybe we'll do that one more uh, time. So I'll duplicate this, take my axis modification, oops, turn it on, and snap it, move this. Like I said, it's going to be in increments of 50, so we can use that to our advantage. Delete that one extra point, turn off my snap, connect and delete, and come through, join segments one more time. At this point, I can also select all my points by hitting Control or Command A, and then right clicking and choosing Soft Interpolation. So a little bit faster than trying to create all those manually, create them evenly, and there we go. You could also scale this up or down if you want those a little bit higher or lower. So maybe we do want just a bit lower. From here, what I'm going to do is put this in a cloner. And this is going to be kind of the spacing of the different um, uh, strings, fabric, whatever you want to call it. So once I have that spline in a cloner, I'll switch this to linear. I don't want it to move up on the Y axis. So instead, I'll do the X. And I'll start by just doing one centimeter. And I'm gonna get a bit crazy here, typing in a thousand. And I probably want these a little bit closer together, but like I said, this is gonna be you know, adjustable or procedural throughout this entire um, process, so I can always come back to this. And you know, depending on your system, you may wanna do a, few, a bit fewer than a thousand, and you can just increase the spacing to get something um, similar. Looks like I made this a bit too long, but once again, we can always um, fix that. Now, this next part is going to require us to put the cloner into a connect object. And this is just so um, what we do next sees this as a single spline and not a bunch of cloned splines, right? So this is all of our pieces of fabric and how close they are together. So we could call this like fabric base. And then what I'm going to do is create a cube. 
scale it down really small, right? Something like that, and put it in a cloner. And we're going to clone onto object and drag in our connect. And what this will do is create clones, okay, um, at different points along our object here. Now, I don't want 10, I just want one. Okay, so we get one row of clones at the very beginning of our spline. And what we can do is then use the rate here to get some movement. So if I set this to 10 and hit play, we're gonna see this move. That's maybe a bit too fast. So I can turn that down to say one. If I wanna make this a little bit longer, I can. There we go. And we can also add just a little bit of variation here. And you'll see as I turn up the variation, these kind of spread out a little bit. And I'll, I will also mention they get more spread out as time goes by. So um, just keep that in mind. But for our purposes, that should work well, okay? And we'll call this um, cubes for tracer. Because what we're gonna do next is hide both of these things. because We don't want them visible because they're not really going to be a uh, part of the end result. What we want to do now is create a tracer and place our cubes for tracer cloner inside of it. And we also want to uncheck trace vertices. So it just traces the axis. Or, and so now what we're going to do is get these splines being drawn out. Okay. Um, because the tracer is tracing out a spline from the middle of each cloned cube. So that's going to be our kind of base animation here. The one thing I want to check on is how smooth these are. And they look pretty good. If you did want to smooth these out a bit more, uh, do so at your own risk. But uh, switching the type here from linear uh, to Bezier and then using an intermediate point type could definitely help. But that looks pretty good for our purposes here. Um, the one thing I might have forget forgot to have turned on in our cubes here uh, is smooth rotation. That will hopefully give these a little bit smoother movement because you can see how it's kind of fast. It isn't even. There's definitely ways we could um, you know, even that out a bit, but I, I don't mind it for right now. Right. Okay, so we have our, our tracer. Now the problem is we need to create some geometry because if we just render this right now, okay, and I'm gonna switch to Redshift for this. If we just render this, we're not gonna see anything because, okay, our tracer is not creating geometry. We see our, our cubes here. We actually don't want those to render. I can start, stop my IPR. Set both of those thread. So the way we can get this to render, um, and you can do this in other renderers as well. Octane would be very similar. Um, even Cinema 4D, I think you could do it using um, the hair tag is what you could add in order to get this to work. Because that's um, grass, hair, something like that. It's been a while since I've used it. But for our purposes, I'm going to use the redshift object tag. And because this is a tracer, because this is a, a spline, we now have this curve section in the redshift object tag. So um, what I can do uh, first, what I should have done first is actually create a dome light and I'll just find an HDRI from um, from our asset browser here. Okay. Just grab that, drag it in here. Perfect. Uh, but the real magic happens in the Redshift object tag where in the curve section, I want to switch this from disabled to cylinders. You could also do hair strands, okay? But even just doing cylinders is going to create geometry uh, at render time. So I can start this 
wait for everything to update. And there we go. We have some geometry. Now this um, graph here will allow us to kind of change the scale at the very end or really the beginning. So what I can do is drag this down a little bit to make this part a little smaller. And we should see that. And I could also maybe even do it a bit more so. Uh, and then I can adjust the handle here to you know, only get it more towards the end. So great. That's looking okay, but it still looks really perfect, like too perfect. So what I'm gonna do is select the cubes for tracer, though you could also do it on the cloner inside the fabric base here as well. Okay, so what we're gonna 